Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, for that lovely intro. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And this is episode number 814 of the show. And this is uh, the AEW um, Rampage Fighter Fest. And I forgot to realize that Collision's still on. So, Collision's still on tonight. Uh, join myself and uh, my friend uh, Jordy Scow, who hosts the um, the live stream for for the for the live reaction, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, hope you guys just hope you guys tune in. Um, on the last episode, we talked about uh, the pat the untimely passing of Bray Wyatt and the and the passing of uh, Terry Funk. And uh, on the Sm on the SmackDown episode, like, like I said, I had a lot to say about that because I think uh, a lot of good folks. Yeah, I've always had a lot of respect for both men, especially for Bray Wyatt, who took. Well, like I said, he has to be the most studious wrestler of all. You know, you learn you learn under your grandfather. You learn under your father's wrestling skills, and then you get to learn. You know, probably some of their peers take little bits and pieces of their person in ring person personas. Like I said, mix them all up, and then you take yourself, your vision on it, and just, it's amazing what Bray Wyatt was all about, man. Let me tell you. Um, the international title was on the line. Orange Cassidy defends against Aaron Solo of uh, QTV, which Harley Cameron, to me personally, this is my all-time favorite episode of Rampage. I'll tell you why. All three of my favorite ladies were featured in this, on this episode. Harley Cameron, first one out of the gate, and uh, first one out of the gate sang solo to the ring, and she is a pretty good singer. Don't knock her. Listen, in, in real life, she's an awesome singer. I always say she always ha she has the beauty of the late great Olivia Newton John, you know, God rest her soul, and the singing talent of Kylie Minogue, you know, and plus, you know, she sings like Olivia, she has a singing talent like Olivia Newton John. Beautiful voice and all, beautiful young lady. But Ar and Ar you know, she made fun of Orange Cassidy, which I know. She can be funny, too. She's probably going to be an all-around, you know. She's going to make it big in AEW. If not, the WWE can take her, and, d well, they'll make her big. Trust me on that one. So, anyways, but right now, Harley Cameron is really gotten herself on a roll with QTV. Got something going here. And, uh, yeah. So, So, so you got that, and uh, you know, uh, sang Aaron Solo to the ring. Solo and Cassie went at it. Cassie does retain the title. So, Orange Cassie could be the longest reigning international champion right now in AEW history. He he could end up breaking the Honky Tonk Man's record for the Intercontinental Championship. You know, the Intercontinental titles in the WWE. Might I digress? Anyways, so you got that going. Uh, Jim Ross has sat down with the new Triple uh, A Latin American champion QT Marshall, or as I love to call him QT Fire Marshall Bill. And uh, I gotta tell you, I got I gotta tell you, it's uh, QT Marshall being condescending towards Jim Ross as usual. And that's all he is. But he was defending a title against Gravity. I will never forget when Pac faced him. He said, you remember me? You remember me? You remember me? And it's like I knew it was a take on. The nickname that he got in the WWE, the man that gravity forgot, you know? <laughs> it was so funny. You remember me now? Oh, it was great. But anyways, QT Marshall did retain the title against gravity with the help of Johnny TV, of course. Uh, so there's that. And then, uh, yeah, a little trash talk before the match, and I think gravity did smack uh, QT Marshall across the face at that point. Dark Order cut a promo. It looks like I think they're targeting the righteous, I do believe. And they're getting more serious. I gotta got respect uh, uh, the Dark Order from, uh, you know, is, it, now just Evil Uno, Alex Reynolds, and, and uh, John Silver, who've been there since day one. It's just um, Brody Lee formed the group. The late, great Brody Lee, God rest his soul. 
and they admitted they have not been the same since that, you know, since his death. And looks like they want to level it up a little bit, which God respect. But my still my favorite guy from that group, Johnny Hungy, John Silver, the Meat Man. I know he's no longer a funny dude, but uh, but you know, listen, God respect Dark Order for trying to step it up a little bit. And I think they'll they'll um, I think they'll probably have their eyes on the trio's titles. So uh, House of Black and the Acclaim better watch their backs, that's for sure. For and. Uh, then uh, Luchasaurus, the TNT champion, without his title because Christian Cage likes to be a ball hog, if you know what I mean, uh, took on some local talent, but his name is Ren Jones, and we don't need and we don't need his brother Stimpy, Stimpy Jones, Ren and Stimpy, get it? Ren Jones, man, you know who won that one? Luchasaurus did. And then Mark Henry's talking about the main event, which another reason why I like Rampage, this episode of Rampage. My three of my favorite ladies were involved in Rampage. One was Harley Cameron, the other two. Hikaru Shida, the AEW Women's World Champ, and Tony Storm, the former champ, and uh, they were on up. It's the size back. There was the preview for kind of like a preview for the Fatal Four Way match that will happen tomorrow afternoon at All In. As you know, for All In, as um. As Hikaru Shida will defend that title against Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, Soraya, and, and this is her home country, and the former champ, Tony Storm, the lovely, gorgeous, curvaceous, and babelicious Tony Storm, might I add. And uh, this was a heck of a matchup, uh, but Tony Storm refused, um, resorted to nefarious tactics, of course. and Or, in fact, Chris Statlander showed up during the matchup and attacked Ruby Soho, who was in their corner. Because Ruby Soho, you open up your mouth, that's what you get, you know. Ruby Soho opened her mouth by challenging uh, Chris Statlander for the TBS title. And it seems like the outcasts are on a mission to get all the time, all the women's titles. So, and I gotta tell you, the outcasts are acting like more, a little bit more like damage control, so to speak. And they, you know, everybody's trying to say you get, they want to be like the outsiders. Don't compare them to the outsiders. I compare them. Uh, I compare uh, the, the outcasts a little more like damage control, so to speak. But you know, they want to control the women's division and damage control and control uh, on in the women's division of the WWE because EO Sky is the champion. So you got that going. And uh, really, really, uh, it's just a heck of a matchup. In the end, though, uh, Tony Storm and Soraya did win after uh, Hikaru Shida got sprayed uh, with the spray. With the sp uh, sp uh, and I think uh, I think I, I, I think Britt Baker knocked out Tony Storm so much the, the spray can came flying out of her hand, which is which is pretty hilarious. But in the end, though, uh, Soraya and Tony Storm did pick up the victory, and they were both holding up the AEW Women's Championship. You see uh, Britt Baker giving Hikaru Shida the candlestick, and Hikaru Shida is kind of like pushing her off. And Hikaru Shida is being very frustrated at the moment. And I'll tell you one thing, this could take the momentum away from both Baker and Shida in the matchup. So, so I got to tell you, this is going to be uh, going to be a fun matchup at all in, to say the least. So, that's it. That's all the time we have on this show. Episode three eight hundred and fifteen of Eric. Let me, what was it? Eight hundred fourteen. Hold up. Let me let me check. Eight hundred four episode eight hundred fourteen of Eric Lehman Shenanigans of nineteen seventy seven. The final stop of uh, the final rampage before all in. We get the final collision before all in tonight. Like I said on on uh, Jordy Scow's channel. Uh, myself, I'll be joining him sooner. Uh, I'll be I'll be joining him tonight. 8 o'clock, be there, be square. Have a lot of fun here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go and do another episode of the show where I'll be making my picks and predictions for AEW All In. So, with that being said, you guys have a good rest of the day. And Mr. Announcer, please, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, Door for Bob Saget production, in association with 
a sweet bowl for raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lehman's Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.